Hi everyone, welcome to Maths World UK. I'm James Grime and today I'm speaking with Johnny Ball. Johnny Ball is a bit of a legend in the UK. His programmes about maths and science inspired a generation and I'll include myself in that. His latest book is called Wonders Beyond Numbers, a brief history of all things mathematical. And today Johnny's going to talk to us about how ancient mathematicians calculated the size of the earth. I don't want to spoil it any more than that. But I started our conversation by asking Johnny whether he thought the history of maths helps him explain mathematical ideas. I think history explains so much about maths and science. If you put yourself in the place of the people who first discovered it, you think, well, I, I could have, if I'd had that information, I could have discovered it. And you see, it's not genius, it's a progression of people thinking clearly and moving forward. And we're, we're, in a, we're in a relay race. The whole human race is a relay race, and every generation gets better. But by looking at the origins of mathematics and science, you get a much clearer picture of what it's all about. Well, I think that leads us into what you're going to show us today. You're going to show it, us a little bit of uh, how things originated. That's right. Really, if I, talk, if I call, have, gave this a title, it would be how we measured the Earth. And I'm going to explain that. And that starts a long, long time ago. The Greeks had a thousand years where they loved maths. The Greeks didn't do numeracy. They didn't even give their numbers names. A was one, or one was A, two was B, and so on. But they loved geometry. And the first of the great mathematicians is a man called Thales. And Thales, 624 to 546 BC, right? But he was the first, and he was incredible. And he asked a question. He asked a question. If you are at the seaside and you're standing on the beach and your eyes are two meters, he didn't use meters, of course, but if your eyes are two meters above the water, and I'm asking you this question, how far is it to the horizon? Well, amazingly, he worked it out. And he found that if your eyes are, well, in today's figures, if your eyes are two meters above the water line, don't put your head on the water line because you get seawater in your ear and up your nose. All right. But so stand, so you're about two meters high, right? Your eyes are, and you can see five kilometers, three miles. It's a fairly accurate thing. The question he asked, and the question I'm asking you, how high would your eyes need to be to see twice as far? And is the answer twice as high? And the answer is not twice as high. Let me take this page off and show you. The answer is two times two or four times as high. So can you see that? Two meters, you can see five kilometers. Eight meters high, you can see 10 kilometers. Three times three, nine times as high, 18 meters, and now you can see three times as far. And Thales, the first known great Greek mathematician, sorted this out. But this mass is needed today if we're going to put satellites in orbit or fire rockets to Mars. It's incredible, isn't it? So he was just one fella, and he understood. It also showed they knew the Earth was round. No messing around. Oh, it's flat. They thought we we're going to sail off the end. No, they knew, because if you came into uh, back to port the first thing you saw was the high ground then you saw the tops of the buildings and eventually you saw at the port and the, the dock where you came in so they knew it was round did they know how big it was well that had to wait for a man called Eratosthenes and Eratosthenes was the head of the library at Alexandria a great mate of Archimedes they used to send puzzles mass puzzles to each other and some of us think they were often trick maths puzzles where the answer was ludicrous. However, he heard a story. Eratosthenes lived in Alexandria. And he had heard a story that in a place called Syene in Lower Egypt, at midsummer's day, at midday, for a few minutes, the sun shone straight down the wells. What? Didn't leave a shadow. What? That doesn't happen because we all know the sun comes at an angle. But not in Syene. Wow. So what did he do? Well, he lived in Alexandria, so he waited for Midsummer's Day. Now, this is 2,000 years ago, and he chose an obelisk. But the obelisk was Egyptian and already 2,000 years old. OK? <laughs> nice thought. And he waited for Midsummer's Day at noon, and he measured the angle. And the angle of the shadow was 7.2 degrees. Now, he may have massaged that a little bit, 
Why? Because 7.2 degrees, when you've got 360 degrees in a circle, it's a beautiful number, because 7.2 into 360 is exactly 50. So he thought, all I have to do is find the distance from Alexander to Said and multiply by 50, and I have the distance around the Earth. Now, you could do this today. If you're in a school, you could talk to another school a couple of hundred miles south, find exactly how far you were, measure the angle of the sun at any particular time, and work out the distance around the Earth. You could do it, okay? Even, even families could do it, you know. However, he did it. He worked it out. Now, how did they measure in those days? They didn't have the odometer. That was a few generations later, about 100, 150 years later, right? The only way they could measure was pacing. They knew camel days how far a camel train traveled in a day. But that varied. It was very hot or very windy, less distance. It was a beautiful mild day, lots of distance, so it varied. But pacing, pacing was brilliant. You could pace accurately. The Romans, when they conquered virtually all of Europe, every time they pitched their camp, the soldiers knew exactly how many miles they were from Rome, always, and they put it up on a sign, always. How did they do it? They paced it. For a television program, I put a tape measure down on the floor, walked around my living room to get warmed up, right, and out the door and back in, and then went bump, bump, and my wife measured a double pace. And I'll tell you, it's, it's an odd way I'm telling you this. It was 1.75 yards. Why have I explained it that way? Well, a thousand of those is 1,750 yards, but in a mile, it's 1,760 yards. I was out by 10 yards in a mile the first time I tried it. So there's no question you could teach soldiers to pace so accurately they knew the mileage. So, however, that's what they did. So he worked it out, and as I say, he found the distance around the Earth was 40,000 kilometers thereabouts, right? But nobody <laughs> believed him. Why? Let me show you this. I've got a globe here, you see, and the globe... <laughs> right, is, is talking about the, the world they knew, which is about here, right? In fact, if I push that over there and bring it over here, I can show you. this is roughly the map that Eratosthenes produced, and it went to West Africa, and it covered Great Britain, and it was about that. It's about that on the globe, okay? So he said that's how big the world, the, how big the world was, but there was so much they didn't know. So they didn't believe him. They wouldn't believe that. That's rubbish. That can't be right. So another guy called Ptolemy produced a map. And this is the map, okay? It's very similar to Eratosthenes' map, right? And it has lines of latitude and longitude because Eratosthenes was the first person to use lines of latitude and longitude. Were they accurate? Well, a little bit, but anyway. So there's the map. And look, this is Great Britain up here, sort of a, a weird angle, it's too long. That's the Mediterranean, too big. This is Africa, and what happens to this bit? They don't know. What's this land here? What's India? So they knew so little, but that's what they thought the world was like. Now, if you look here, you find it starts at nothing. They have no symbol for zero. So it starts five degrees in, right? And then it goes to 180 degrees here. So they thought that was halfway round the earth. And it wasn't. That was rubbish. But this map was found centuries later by a man called Christopher Columbus, who in 1492 sailed the ocean blue. And where did he go? He started from here. And he went down to here. Why did he go that way? He couldn't help himself. Why? Because the earth spins on its axis once every 24 hours. And that causes both the atmosphere and the seas to lag, to drag back. And because they drag back, they cause currents. And the currents are clockwise in the Northern Hemisphere. So our weather comes up past America and over to us. So Britain, amazingly, has the best climate in the world. We just have the worst weather. Right. And the reason is because it's, it's these warm currents from here in the West Indies come up here and hit us. And that's what keeps us warm. But that was it. That's how it works. In the Southern Hemisphere, the currents go anticlockwise. So he thought he had discovered the Indies. 
where all the riches came from, all the spices, all the gold and silver and all kinds of other things. They wanted to get to the East Indies. So he sailed this way, and he called that the West Indies, thinking he got to the Indies, going west. How wrong could you be? I'll tell you. If you bore a hole through the earth there, a bit above the equator, you come out the other side, you actually come out in the Philippines. So he was half a world away from where he thought he was. Half a world! In fact, he was further away from where he thought he was than when he started. But we believe him and we don't call him a hero. Oh, good old Columbus. He was just stick of two short planks. He really was. But along came a man only a few years younger called Amerigo Vespucci. And he done the maths. And Vespucci got to here and went right down here, right down, right down South America. Okay. And then about here, turn back. Another voyage came this way. And this one time got well in to the, um, <coughs> to the West Indies and well into the Gulf here. And around here, he had an almanac. And the almanac told him what was happening in Nuremberg, because it was the Nuremberg Almanac. And it said that on a certain day, at a certain time, three planets totally lined up in line with each other. Very rare. And he was over here. So he waited for that date, and he measured the planets. And he found the planets amazing. They were over there, uh, literally on the horizon to him. And he worked out that he was 87 degrees west of Nuremberg. And he was right. And he understood the size of the Earth. He also saw that we couldn't get past this landmass. Other people had gone to Canada and, and Northern America and they couldn't get through. So he said, there's got to be something on the other side, either a lot of land or a lot of ocean. Today, we know there's the Pacific Ocean, which they hadn't discovered. And we look at the Pacific Ocean. If you look at it from that angle, you can see virtually no land. Lots of islands, but no big landmass. The Pacific covers half the globe, half the globe, and they didn't know about it. That's why it took them a long time to really understand the shape of the Earth. Now, what shape is the Earth in today, you might ask? A bit of a mess, isn't it? Because we do pollute, and we are a great strain on resources and everything else. And we don't really seem to care very much for other creatures and things like that. However, I've got to tell you this. We are aware of what we're doing to the Earth. We are aware of the strain. There is no question we get better at all these things. So in the future, sometimes in the future, the Earth is going to be brighter and better, and life on it, brighter and better, than we can yet imagine. That's what will happen. Believe it. It's happening in my lifetime. It'll happen in yours. There you are. Measuring the Earth. That is a beautiful way to end, Johnny. I love that. Uh, thank you for coming in and showing us all those interesting little historical mathematical ideas. And if I wanted to learn more interesting historical mathematical ideas, where could I learn about uh, you that? You could learn from my book, of course. Ah, oh, good <laughs> idea. Wonders beyond numbers. Yes, and uh, it, it's, uh, it's a good 400 pager. Took me four years. Um, when I tried to sell it, nobody believed it was going to be much good. So they tried to get me to do something else. And eventually I did it. And it's it's fine. And it's sold in China and Russia and Japan and the European countries and the States. And it's it's done very well. The thing about it is it's to be read. It's an easy read. I read in doing this all the history of math treaties by great mathematicians. But great mathematicians could be very boring. It could get too heavy and you leave it. Where are we now? I've never, I tried to never be too heavy. And if you want to be heavier, you go to the index. Now, nobody reads index in your books. So mine's called the wow factor math index, right? And the wow factor tells you all kinds of things. Like how long would Archimedes leave need to be to move the earth? Well, I worked it out about 1,582 light years long <laughs> and it's in the book and I explain it and it's, it's easy to read so there you are thanks johnny we'll put links to johnny's books in the description and if you enjoyed that you can actually see johnny perform live in theaters across the uk currently under covid conditions but we'll put that information in the description as well 
Well, that's all for me for now. So I'll say stay curious and I'll see you next time.